This evening, uh, I'm looking at something slightly different. Uh, I'm looking at two um, reference oscillators. Uh, these sort of things are used for a number of reasons. A lot of people use them for their ham radios. Um, there are even, believe it or not, people use them for uh, their uh, compact disc players and digital uh, DAC converters to get a very accurate uh, low jitter um, oscillator. Apparently, they seem to think it makes the sound of the uh, audio better. I've not sure it does or not, but anyway, that's what people do. That's what people buy, and these things are available in different sort of forms. But the most common one um, is this uh, GPS disciplined um, oscillator. Um, the way these work, the one above anyway works, is you basically you uh, it's got a GPS receiver built in, uh, and once it's got a GPS lock and it's found some um, satellites, it picks up the uh, one kilohertz, uh, one uh, second pulse there's an extremely accurate um, oscillator on board this uh, GPS satellites they need to be very accurate to uh, to get location and um, so when they're doing sort of like um, locating where you are you know where you are by the exact time signal of how long it takes for the signal to come from one um, GPS uh, satellite to the next one and the trigonometry is worked out and can tell you exactly where you are on the position on the planet. That's the only way you could do it. If one of the oscillators is slightly out of line, um, it would give you a false uh, position, like on the road, for example. So these uh, satellites have an extremely accurate um, uh, reference uh, oscillator in them. Um, more, Much more accurate than, a, probably even more than a rubidium oscillator, but close to sort of cesium standard, very, very high accuracy in the low nanoseconds I should think. Um, now so what this does is this basically this GPS receiver receives the pulse at one second interval from the from the satellites and then what that does is it's fed into a uh, a multiplier that ramps it up to uh, 10 megahertz uh, and that 10 megahertz is compared with the um, oven controlled oscillator we've got inside and if it sees there's a phase shift between the uh, incoming one, one ten megs from the GPS signal, which has been multiplied up, and the uh, oven-controlled oscillator, it'll steer the uh, oven-controlled oscillator by its steer pin, which most oven oscillators have, which basically you adjust the bias on the oven oscillator to bring it into spec. So basically, what this thing does is it's looking at the, it's using the the, uh, the reference from the GPS and it's steering an oven-controlled oscillator to keep it exactly on uh, 10 megahertz, um, and that's great. It's, and it's good in a number of ways. It means that um, the GPS uh, signal, if the GPS signal's lost, the oven-controlled oscillator will work in a sort of like an open loop mode where it knows where it was last. Uh, oven-controlled oscillators, once they're up to temperature, they're extremely stable and they will stay, you know, more or less smack on for a good, well, in more or less sort of hours and hours. Um, but of course, if you lose lock, you're not going to just lose the signal. You're not going to lose your uh, 10 meg output or your reference output. Um, and as soon as the signal comes back again, it will re-discipline the um, control oscillator to bring it back in by looking at the phase difference between the two signals from its uh, one megahertz, um, ten megahertz output from its uh, a GPS signal and the output of the oven control oscillator. Compare the two signals, and if there's a phase shift, it will steer the oven control oscillator back into one uh, to the ten megahertz reference again. So very, very reliable. Uh, uh, and fairly cheap to buy, um, as I know a lot of you knew I had a, a rubidium uh, standard. That was very good. Um, that's a standalone system, basically you plug it in, you let it warm up, and it's, uh, and it's on reference. Unfortunately, it didn't last long, and it wouldn't lock after a while. And I think basically the physics, uh, physics engine part of it uh, had packed up. I think that's what it was, and it I just couldn't get it to lock in the end. And they were fairly reasonable price, sort of ten years ago, but now they're going for sort of like two hundred pounds. Uh, but I think when I paid, I think I paid about eighty for mine. Uh, but uh, now they're going for ridiculous money. So this is a, as I say, it's a GPS disciplined oscillator, uh, and I've uh, used it before, and it's very good. 
it's got um, one pulse per second, basically the raw output from the uh, what the GPS sees. Uh, a 10 megahertz square wave. This one's been modified by someone else, um, and this is originally where the aerial was, but now this is actually um, we. This is now a a one megahertz sine wave output. Someone's put an external amplifier board inside, um, so it's got an external um, sine wave output, which is nice because this was originally a square wave. Um, output it's not the purest sine waves in the world but it's 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 okay it's also got an rs232 port here as you can see that tells you uh, allows you to see uh, with software exactly where the positions of the satellites are and various information on the satellites you're connected up to which is uh, not something i'm going to use but it's quite an interesting feature um we've also got this uh various uh, three leds here we've got run basic means that the unit's on basically and that will flash once a second uh, you've got a GPS lock, which basically means it's got a lock on a couple of satellites and it's happy with that. We've got an alarm here, which basically says that either the GPS, um, sorry, the oven controlled oscillator isn't up to temperature or it's um, it's lost lock. Uh, and basically means it's not, I would say, running in open loops, it's not getting steering basically from the uh, GPS satellites. From what I can understand from the Chinese manual, that's basically what it does. So that's how that works, and that will give you a very accurate uh, one megahertz or one second pulse output, um, and it, that's very useful for calibrating, as I say, various things, but certainly counters and uh, checking everything really. You know, your signal generator, to make sure it's uh, you can feed it one meg to take the ten megahertz out of here and feed it into channel one of a scope. Take the ten megahertz from your other uh, from your signal generator, feed it into the second channel, and you can see. If there's a if they're shifting between each other and you know that if one's shifting, you know it's your signal generator is going to be offline. All this time this has got a GPS lock in, it will be spot on. This system down here is quite an interesting one, I, I, and I assume it's an older um, design. I've never heard of these until very recently. It's an, it's an off-air um, frequency standard. Now this this is a later design um, made by a company called Quartz Lock, and this is the model 2AX. The original one was a 2A, um, and what this does is it picks up a, a very accurate uh, cesium standard from the direct rich transmitter, uh, which transmits radio four. Or well, this one's tuned to radio four. You can actually adjust it to receive other um, transmitters. There was a French station that's closed down. I think it in the uh, late. 2000s I think they no longer transmit anymore so this will probably be I don't know depends how long they keep the transmitter going for but this will probably be redundant in 10 years time but I was intrigued to see how it worked basically all this does is this tunes into the uh, the frequency that uh, 198 kilohertz it strips out the uh, all the modulation and is heavily filtered so all it's interested in is the the, the, the 198 kilohertz that's extremely highly uh, refined and you know very accurate because uh, it's basically running off a cesium standard so in theory this will probably be more accurate than the GPS disciplined oscillator so what you do is you switch it on um, and it similar thing I'm, I can't really full, find the full information of how it works but I think it's another thing it's a, an oven controlled or a steered um, I think it's just a VCO so basically the it's looking it knows it's got a 198 kilohertz uh, exactly frequency and it just steers a, a, a VCO to give you 198 kilohertz and then it, then it gives you the various outputs on the on the front panel here we've got um, 1 megahertz 10 megahertz and there's a 5 megahertz option it says an option here I'm not sure if it's an option for both of these but that's a 1 megahertz um, sign that's a 1 megahertz a 10 megahertz sign and a 5 megahertz optional sign and then we've got uh, square wave outputs as well some some instruments require square wave for like a uh, external clocks so i think the marconi requires a square wave to i think it will work with sine wave but i think it just works better with the square wave so these are basically just these are the outputs basically it's, it's pretty straightforward source button here power supply turns it on at the source that's fine We've got um, the phase lock loop um, button here. So basically what happens is when you switch it on uh, and you look at PLL, this window here will swing around and when it's got a phase lock, it will sit in the middle of this display here. And you can see that in between these two windows, that's when it's got a phase lock loop. Receive mode will t is basically a signal strength meter. So it shows you how much signal you've got. You need to get it over halfway on the, on the scale. Um, 
ideally a bit higher than that, that's fine. DC basically is just a DC check to make sure the rails on the inside are okay. And it's by the by, really. I mean, if it's plugged into the mains, it's going to be fine. There might have been a, a quartz option for it or something, I don't know. But um, that's basically how this thing works. Um, I've actually got it connected up to a long wire aerial, but they do actually suggest you use a loop, uh, which I haven't got. Not, not that will work at long, free, long wave frequencies anyway. I did actually try and make up a, an aerial at work. I put in this tube here that was going to mount on the roof, but I don't think I've got the right coil on here. I've got it on an old um, hacker radio, and it doesn't seem to receive anything, so I need to look into that, uh, check, check I've got the right coil. I can replace it. I, these ends just pop off. This is just a bit of old drain pipe. Put it inside a bit of drain pipe. These are a couple of caps out of them, some connector caps that we had at work. So that it's worked really well. It looks quite nice. I'm quite pleased with that actually. Apart from it doesn't work, so it's not that great. So let me demonstrate um, the. Uh, let's demonstrate the. Uh, what should we demonstrate first? Should we demonstrate the uh, GPS standard? Okay. So let's plug the power supply in. Which I think it's, no, it's not plugged in. Let's plug this in. Now the chap who actually modified it and put the sine wave uh, conversion in it also put some the power socket at the back, which is nice. So you haven't got it sticking out the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. Um, now I'm going to. Uh, it's connected up to the uh, Rachel Dana uh, frequency counter, which is um, oven controlled oscillator standard. So it's pretty pretty accurate. But it's only been on for 20 25 minutes, so it might not show the exact um, exactly the right frequency. But we'll plug this thing in. Okay. Right, the GPS error is connected, and the GPS error is just sitting on the on because we've got a glass roof in the workshop. It's not a problem. So you can see we've got the alarm on. Uh, basically, it hasn't got a lock. It hasn't, and you can also see that the GPS signal uh, lights not lit because there is no uh, GPS lock. So it's running, and it's going to sit there for a, maybe a minute or so um, before it finds a GPS lock. Once it's found the GPS lock, uh, that means obviously it's got a GPS lock, but the alarm light will stay on. There we go, GPS lock. The alarm light will stay on because it can't steer the oven controlled oscillator because the oven controlled oscillator isn't up to, up to temperature, so it probably can't get it into the range it needs needs it to be. So let's give that. It probably take a couple of minutes to warm up, uh, and once that's warmed up, I'll uh, I'll show you what it's doing on the counter. Okay, now you see that we've uh, got a GPS. Uh, lock and we've got the alarm lights gone out so basically the oven controlled oscillator is uh, in control well steerable and it's uh, should be producing exactly the right frequency so yeah basically the alarm warns you all it tells you is that the output probably isn't accurate until that light's gone out so let's have a look at the uh, counter uh, bear with me I'll zoom out so you can see it I can't see it from here let me just lift you up so there we go, there's our frequency counter there, now we're at uh, oven controlled oscillator and that's still warming up but you can see it's uh, it's coming into range and it's uh, very stable, it's just the oven, the, the frequency is changing basically because the uh, the counter is uh, not warmed up properly, but uh, you see that's moving in and that's probably the, the easiest way of getting a, a really accurate um, a reference frequency and it seems to work very well very pleased with it uh, and they're not um, as I say they're not hugely expensive and they're going to be certainly more reliable than the rubidium that's going to be stripped out of a uh, a control tower somewhere in China and it's probably in its last knockings anyway so let's um, set up the um, off-air standard and have a look at that and see how that performs okay it's clicked up to a long white aerial it's not the best thing to use but it, it will certainly do for the time being until I can get something that's probably a bit more directional um, so we'll switch it on and we'll start with phase lock loop. Um, you should get a buzz from it warning you that it's lost lock. Uh, it's just going to fire off so you can hear. So switch it on. You can hear the beep here and you'll see this meter swinging around trying to get a, a, a lock on the uh, 198 kilohertz coming in. You've got a, a phase lock loop or open loop uh, light on. We'll wait for that light to go out what should happen then it should move to the light on the right saying um, fast unlock which base uh, past unlock which basically means it, it has lost a lock in the past so it means if you walk away from it and you come back and see that light's been flashing it's warned you it has lost lock briefly but uh, has regained it again so there you go past unlock so we can reset that and that should put the lights out 
and you can see here on the meter it's in the middle of the uh, basically in the middle of the display which means the face lock loop is has got a lock and it's in is in it's in sync sort of thing okay and if we turn the switch to RX that's basically our signal meter you see it's nice and strong signal there's no problem with signal strength there uh, DC as I said basically measures the DC of the rails it's it's, only, it's a bit of a gimmick I think really unless there is as I say a battery option for it so that's it that's basically got locked on to that so if we plug our uh, let's have a look at our 10 megahertz output uh, just looking here and you'll see here it's very similar sort of reading it was getting with the uh, rubidium uh, the uh, GPS disciplined oscillator 9.9999996 uh, megahertz so I just really really wanted to do is demonstrate this particular unit because there aren't many uh, videos on these um, they seem to be a sort of like a bit of a niche market um, no one's really buying stuff like this anymore simply because they're worried about the uh, 198 kilohertz um, signal being taken down which are probably at some point it will be um, yeah they say that they're running out of valves and they, they can't keep these things going forever um, there must be other ways of doing it and they must be possible to make the valves still I mean so many people still rely on 198 kilohertz on long wave uh, for uh, yeah well anything I mean there are places I'm sure still in the UK that can't receive an FM signal um, and there is an op possibly an option of uh, people have been talking about that even though that uh, that signal might go there might be some of the local transmitters that are still transmitting that are still might not be as accurate as uh, Deutrich with their cesium reference but they might be uh, certainly you know maybe rubidium locked uh, so you could probably if you could actually adjust this to work on a different frequency you could probably use that um, as I say, you can adjust it to work on different frequencies, but it's um, it's it's only selected to a few channels. It's it's um, jumper control. It's not like a tuning capacitor inside or anything. Anyway, I hope that was of some interest. Um, fascinating to me these these things, um, these strange bits of gear that you can get. I'm f interested in these sort of frequency standards and how incredibly accurate they are. When you think it's it's doing a, it's receiving a 10 megahertz signal and it's about one millihertz out you know that's pretty bloody impressive stuff uh, anyway thanks for watching and uh, more to come okay just to uh, finalize actually um, the top waveform is the GPS disciplined oscillator the bottom one is the off-air um, signal from Deutrich Droitwich, Droitwich whatever it is um, and you can see there is a very very slow uh, shift between the two phases um, I don't know which one it is, which is which one is drifting. It might be both of them. It might only be one of them. Um, and I'm suspicious that it's probably the uh, the uh, quartz lock uh, from the 198 kilohertz. I'm not entirely sure, obviously, because I've got no reference standard. If we had something like a rubidium, we could probably see which one it was, but we haven't got that. Not interested in it because it's such it's such tiny measurements that. Um, the stuff I do in the workshop, this is a thousand times more accurate than I'm ever going to need anyway. But it's interesting to see how, how stable they are and uh, how well they work, actually. Um, quite a fascinating sort of like system of how accurately you can actually make these just by, for example, listening to 198 kilohertz, dividing it down and getting a time reference. And likewise with satellite, uh, GPS satellites transmitting a signal every one second multiplying it up uh, and you know m making the the correction you, and you can see it's, it's almost 180 degrees out of phase here um, and it's drifting but it will pull itself back again um, so the difference is really negligible um, and they're both extremely accurate long term uh, prospects I would say that probably the, the one to go for is the uh, GPS disciplined because uh, I don't know how long are the uh, long wave broadcasts are going to be around for but certainly both of them are uh, viable for uh, certainly the next uh, probably 15 to 20 years